Hey guys, I just wanted to make a, a quick video for you. So hopefully the outside noise isn't too crazy. I'm not using a professional mic or anything like that. I'm just recording into the, uh, the MacBook. I wanted to show you a, an approach to using side chaining as a mixing tool. I've been using this uh, quite a bit myself and I thought I would share it with you guys. So basically the idea is you have one part that's playing and you want to add a new part into your song but suddenly those two parts will conflict and you only want that other part to get out of the way when when the the new part is playing you don't want it to drop in volume all the, all the time so that's what's really great about this uh, side chaining technique so let me give you an example here basically i've got this little idea plane and I'll, I'll probably be sharing this uh, track with you guys later as I finish it but it's just in the the beginning stages so I've cut up a bunch of samples from a movie and I'm kind of building a song out of it so this is what I've got here Go ahead and And what's happening is this singing part here. Would normally be interfering with this part here if I turn this off. I'll play that together. So that part needs to be pushed down so that the other part can kind of take over and not be cluttered up with that. And the way to do this is really, really simple. So you go over to the one that you want to sidechain, so the one that you're going to affect or, or turn the volume down on. And you just drag in a, uh, a compressor instrument and it'll look something like that. Then you open it up, turn on the side chain, and then in your audio from, choose the track with the part that you want to side chain it to. So in this case, when this is playing, nothing will happen until I bring in this little singing part. <laughs> And then I'll bring this other part in, and you'll see it side chaining. Now, if I solo this, you'll be able to hear the volume drops happen. Where normally it would be doing this if I turn the compressor off. So let me show you the difference between uh, the part being cluttered without side chaining, and then I'll turn the side chaining on. Now you might not be completely familiar with, with the samples just from this uh, little video, but essentially I've made one melody to take over the other one. And you can do this with all kinds of things. You could do this if you've got like a, a guitar part that's playing and then the singer comes in and you don't want to automate the, the guitar down. You just want it to turn down when the, when the vocalist is singing. And you could just 
create, you're not really trying to create like the side chain effect that, that they do in a lot of house tracks. You're basically going to set the release to a shorter amount of time so that it immediately kind of jumps back in when the other instrument's not playing or the voice isn't playing or anything that causes volume. Anyway, that's my tip for the day. I hope that that helps you. I hope you can use that for mixing. It's a really great way to get things that are interfering and kind of push them away without having to do a lot of crazy automation and things like that. All you do is just kind of work with the ratio, which is going to be how strong the push is going to be, as well as the threshold, which is going to be how much the, the gain is going to be reduced or how much the volume is going to be lowered. So experiment with that, and I hope that little tip helps with some of your mixes. Enjoy.